What's up, y'all? I'm your host, Lil T, and I'm going through a bit of an identity crisis. To give you a little bit of a timeline, my voice first changed when I was 15. Yes, I know, I'm a late bloomer. But suddenly, I realized it's changed again. Here, listen to my old voice. What's up, y'all? I'm your host, Lil T, and I am craving something. I don't understand why that would happen. I mean, when you first get your voice, it's a little inconsistent and changing, but you find your footing eventually. You grow up with the same voice and then suddenly it changes, making everything unfamiliar and weird. That's awful, right? Voice acting. The art of finding a technically trained, multi-talented actor or Chris Pratt to provide the sounds that emerge from a character's mouth. Voice acting has come a long way, especially in gaming. For a while, everyone was just with chiptune, beep boops, and a text box. So unrealistic. And eventually, game developers went, wait, what if a text-to-speech voice could insult you? It already does. You're short. Enter Stern Electronics. In 1980, they created an arcade game called Berserk. And this was one of the first games to ever feature digitized speech. This little smiley face dude, Otto, would yell at you and try to hit you while you tried killing the robots in the room with you. Fight like a robot. As games evolved, so did the need for better voice acting, supported by advancements in the technology to do so. And I have all the respect for these actors. These guys were talented. They had to convey all this emotion and personality through often limited dialogue and sound quality. They were casted not because they were famous, <coughs> but because they were good and brought the characters to life. We'll come back to that. 1981 sees the creation of the face of gaming, Casey Munchkin, who would later star in New Super Casey Munchkin Wii. Oh, and also some man that could jump. Donkey Kong itself didn't feature any voice acting, aside from maybe some DK grunt sounds, but they definitely weren't acted. They were more like... However, because... Consumerism. There were some commercials put out to promote it. First up in 1982, we've got this Charlie Chaplin looking fellow, Mr. Harris Shore. His voice is a sort of evil circus ringmaster type deal. You're not gonna stop me, you stupid ape! I got Donkey Kong, and now I'll get you too, Junior! For some reason, I get the vibe that he was behind the other car that hit young Sheldon's dad. Just me? In these 1983 serial commercials, Larry Moran is behind the voice. Mario, now in an animated form, trying to force kids to eat consumerism, sort of sounds like the Mario teaches typing voice. Yes, I know this is a bit of a spoiler for later, but shut up. Kids, kids, you wanna help get Donkey Kong? Give me a crunch! One more... This is truthfully where you can see a preview of Mario's future voice. He has some of the voice crack friendly higher pitched inflection that would be seen later. This next one's extremely obscure and I kind of want to talk a bit about it. In 1983, a company called Kid Stuff released an album that was meant to go along with the arcade game. This company produced several novelty children's albums during the 70s and 80s, many of which were inspired by popular video games and media franchises, with this being no different. Apart from the first track, Donkey Kong Goes Home narrates an original story at the start of each song, written by the composers that attempt to explain the events of the original game. Despite being officially licensed by Nintendo, the album's story drastically deviates from the Mario canon that would later be established. In this version, Mario is a pizza parlor owner, and he and his delivery girl Pauline work near a construction site that was once the town zoo, which was home to the Donkster. Back in the day, they used to deliver food to the Kong of all Kongs when he belonged there. And so suddenly, when a circus featuring DK comes to town, the gorilla recognizes his old home and breaks free to interact with Pauline. He takes her and goes to the top of the construction site before Mario arrives. Donkey Kong throws barrels at him before realizing who he is when he gets to the top and stops. Mario rescues Pauline and is hailed as a hero by the town, and they agree to build Donkey Kong his own zoo on the construction site. Anyway, Mario's voice actor, Pat McBride, had a big job to do, because this wasn't just a 15 second commercial, this was an anime, a storytelling epic, and he had to do a lot more speaking. Well, I really wasn't the being a hero, because the Donkey Kong isn't the really dangerous. It suggests that Donkey Kong is a homesick for the zoo. So I'm asking that the very top of the building be used as the Donkey Kong Zoo. And yeah, he does an alright job. This was the first time Mario would ever have an Italian accent, which would remain consistent with most other portrayals. 
1993 was a big year. We also got the start of the Saturday Supercade television show, which was produced by the creators of Scooby-Doo, Joe Ruby and Ken Spears, now with Ruby Spears Productions. This was a Saturday morning cartoon segment show featuring different skits with characters from the golden age of arcade games such as Frogger, Cuber, and of course, the DK crew. Not, not that DK crew. Yeah, them. Here, Mario was voiced by legendary voice actor Peter Cullen. Yes, Optimus Prime and Eeyore himself. Hey, Melonhead! Come on down from there! This time, you're going back to the circus! His voice for Mario is rougher, but not overly Italian, as reflected in his design. He kind of looks like a Playmobil figure, but like, in a cartoon. Did that make sense? Something interesting to note about this is that for a while, people thought Peter Cullen was actually behind the voice of Bowser in Mario 64, as well as other games around the same time. The story went that he had recorded sound bites not for anything Mario related, but for the 1976 King Kong remake as the titular gorilla. They then reused those voice clips for Bowser's growls in Mario 64 and all those other N64 games. This, however, was found out to not be the case. Fairly recently, actually. The sounds slash voices cited as being from Peter Cullen weren't actually done by him. Two even came from 1957's The Land Unknown, a movie that was released decades before Universal's King Kong, which was in 1976. But finally, we land on one of the most iconic Mario voice actors, and that would be Captain Lou Albano. Hey, paisanos, it's the Super Mario Brothers Super Show! Lou Albano was a professional Italian wrestler in the 1950s who adopted an arrogant, mafia-esque persona. He retired from wrestling to become a manager after receiving threats from real mafia members. Albano also notably appeared as the father figure in Cyndi Lauper's music video for Girls Just Wanna Have Fun. The role he was best known for outside of wrestling, however, was that of Mario in the Super Mario Bros. Super Show cartoon by Deke. Lou announced his casting on a 1986 episode of Regis and Kathy Lee. The show featured live action segments which were parodies of sitcoms, with Mario and Luigi, played by Danny Wells, living in their basement workshop in Brooklyn and dealing with the quirks of running a plumbing business in the late 80s. They were frequently visited by various celebrity guest stars and often found themselves in wacky hijinks. It also featured cartoon segments based on the first and second Mario games, where they teamed up with Peach's dead name and Toad against King Koopa. If food isn't pasta, it doesn't count! Hey! Who called this lunch break anyway? It's clear Lou very much cared about this role. He even hired a barber to come on set and shave off his trademark goatee to give him a more Mario-like appearance. He'd make many appearances in character and costume, including for some now infamous PSAs. I'm Captain Lou Albano talking to you about drugs. Kids, don't be afraid to say no. Anyone that asks you to use drugs is not your friend. And if you do drugs, you go to hell before you die. And according to producer John Grust, he'd offered to legally change his name to Mario during the production of the show. Lou performed in a gruff Brooklyn accent, but still had a touch of excitement and warmth to it. Certainly come to the right place. We'll demonstrate right now just how good we are with absolutely no obligation. Mario, no less by this point, wasn't a bumbling middle-aged man. He was a happy guy, so his voice was kept relatively fun and bouncy, even though it was a bit hoarse. Sadly, Lou passed away on October 14th, 2009 in Westchester County, New York of a heart attack while residing in hospice care at 76 years old. Lou's performance as the character is still widely remembered and loved by fans. Except Nintendo. Yet they like to pretend that the Super Show just doesn't exist. They're lost. Hey, I think it's time to swing your arms from side to side. Come on, it's time to go do the Mario. Take one step and then again, let's do the Mario. Walk together now. You got it. It's the Mario. The Super Show wasn't a hit with critics, but it was a hit in terms of viewership and its ability to engage a young Mario-obsessed audience. It was popping off. This led to the creation of two follow-up series based on subsequent Mario games, those being The Adventures of Super Mario Bros. 3 and Super Mario World. These kept the same art styles, albeit even cheaper looking, but did not have Lou Albano return, as well as ditching the live action segments. Instead, we got Walker Boone, who fun fact, is Canadian, like me! In fact, most of the cast of these two shows are. Another dub for Deke. His voice is very similar to Lou's, but it does have its own unique flair to it. Almost like every line he's putting physical strength into. Like, he's lifting something very heavy while saying every line. 
Yoshi, you dinner-devouring dino brat. Leave some for the rest of us. If I wasn't sure, would I do this? Let's go! His most famous role was Commander Lynch in Star Trek The Next Generation. Young Sheldon would have loved this. Man, two Young Sheldon references in one day. 1992 saw the release of Mario Teaches Typing, published by Interplay Productions, a game designed to teach kids all the fun letters and Q. Here he was voiced by Ronald B. Rubin, not Reagan. And like, yeah, he, he sure did voice act. And, and he sure did do an Italian guy voice. Welcome to Mario Teaches Typing. On your mark, get set, go. Congratulations, you made it. There, there isn't much to say about this one, guys. You know, I just, I, I, I'm trying to figure out what I can say. You know what? I truthfully, I, moving on. The next year, 1993, saw the release of the infamous Super Mario Bros. live action film starring Bob Hoskins as the mustachioed human. Is the movie bad? Is water wet? Bob Hoskins was a legendary actor, and he did the best he possibly could with what he was given. For a realistic Mario, which, reminder, the only main games out at the time were 1 to 3, World, and both lands, he did a very good job. The main reason to watch this film is to marvel at the sheer amount of time and talent that went into every part of this movie, except the script. It does feel like he was really trying to save it, even though, let's face it, he knew it was a train wreck. Daisy! The Rock! Considering the whole project was entirely misguided and the script was horrible, his performance is astonishing and definitely the highlight of a very bad film. He endured numerous injuries, including being stabbed four times, electrocuted, nearly drowned, and breaking a finger requiring him to wear a cast for the rest of the shoot. He did, however, come to set drunk often, as did other cast members to cope with the heavy turmoil on set. In fact, the reason Bob broke his hand was indirectly caused by him sharing scotch with John Leguizamo. In the scene with the Mario Bros van, John Leguizamo was too drunk and brake too hard, causing the door to slam on Bob's hand. What's even funnier is that Bob didn't even know what a Mario was. He didn't even know it was a video game until his kids informed him. I didn't even know it was a game. It was my kids that told me. Well, I said, what's your next film? I'm doing Super Mario Brothers. Oh, that's the game. Oh, what? Yeah, here. and this is you. And I saw this thing jumping up and down. I thought, I used to play King Leah. Throughout the film, he's gruff and seems genuinely angry about having to be there. All right. Come on. Come and get it. Come on. Come on, Ruffle Head. Let's see what you're made of. But despite that, his voice and portrayal of Mario stands out in a film plagued by frequent script rewrites and a troublesome directing team. Reflecting on the film after its release throughout multiple interviews, Bob openly expressed his disdain, describing it as the worst project he ever did. Did I ever tell you guys how much I like ASMR? It's divisive, I know. People think it's weird or creepy, but I can say with full confidence, I fall asleep to it every night. The Mario is missing voice actor sounds like an ASMR artist. We're there. All I can see are our turtle tracks. Luigi, what do you say we give a Bowser the old Brooklyn one, two? Nicholas Glazer, give me Tinga! What a pesky plumber. Hey, wait, who's nice of the picnic to invite us over for a princess gay louser? Everyone knows what Hotel Mario is. The classic 1994 Philips CDI game with the MS Paint cutscenes and goofy -ah voice acting. Yes, I did just say that. The game had low sales, partially due to a lack of interest in the CDI system and received mainly negative reviews. But has since then, of course, gained a cult following over time for its cutscenes. And I just gotta say, I love Mark Groh. There's just something about his performance that is so intrinsically funny to me. He's putting a lot of effort in, and he just has these funny enunciations of words. Luigi, Bowser, Koopalings, the enclosed, uh-oh, where am I? Check. Toasted. All toasters. Toast, toast. Go. No. Get the hint? You. Playing with the door. It's been one of those days. Mm. Wendy's mm. Hotel. This is it, Luigi. We ain't afraid of no Koopas. We're still in the area of a gruff Italian voice, though. A few performances have just been adding some inflection and bounce to it. So now, what if we go back in time, just for fun, to 1991? A man named Mike Fusco from a company called Sim Graphics was working on a real-time motion capture software. The system would require the actor to wear a headset rig, which transposed the actor's expression using rollerballs onto a model of a character. The system also formally required everything to be connected together, likely caused by the limits of computing power at the time. They were hoping companies would be interested for advertising purposes. Nintendo quickly took interest and contacted Sim Graphics to create a system featuring Mario based on the technology. 
technology. Auditions were overseen by the producer who ran the events that the system would appear in, in tandem with Don James, the at the time executive vice president of operations for Nintendo of America. As the audition was ending and they were packing up their equipment, one man entered the room, uninvited, and asked if he could read for the part. This man didn't know of Mario or Nintendo, but he was going to give it a shot. They sighed and let him in. They told him he was an Italian plumber from Brooklyn named Mario, and then they told him to start. And so he did. But as opposed to the Lou Albano style voice that every other actor did, he did something different. At first, he had planned to talk like a stereotypical Italian-American with a deep, raspy voice. However, he then thought to himself that maybe it would be too harsh for children to hear. So he made it more soft-hearted and friendly. He started rambling about pizza and spaghetti and sausage. Before they called out cut, they had no more tape left. They told the man they'd be in touch, which in this man's mind meant take a hike. However, the producer was seemingly so impressed by his performance, he called Don James immediately afterwards to urge him that only this man's audition should be sent to Japan. And that man was, of course, Mr. Charles Martinet. He was flown out to South Pasadena the next day to be fitted for the system, wherein he had motion sensors attached to his face, which transposed his facial movements to a computer-generated Mario head on screen. He watched people passing by the screen through a hidden camera and talked to them as Mario. Now how come when he does it it's cool and when I do it it's a misdemeanor? Due to the long shifts, Stevie Coyle was hired as a voice match to take over during Charles's breaks. This was such a success that they included a form of this Mario in real time in the 1994 CD release of Mario Teaches Typing. This little funny guy would gain a lot of attention online due to just how silly he is. His voice is so friendly and for the first time, Mario sounds genuinely excited about everything. He loves life. Nice computer you got here. Can I have it? Oh no, I'm a fallen and I can't get up. That is my impression of American advertising. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, where'd everybody go? Oh, there you are. <laughs> Whee! That's amore. Get it? Amore il? <laughs> I said the funny. Now Charles would make another game appearance in Mario's Game Gallery before the world would be properly introduced to him in 1996. Keep in mind, these were computer games, and not very popular ones at that, and Mario in real time was sort of exclusive to Nintendo-based events. No, the world's first introduction to Charles' voice was in Super Mario 64, with that ever so iconic, It's me, Mario! As a former theater actor, Charles has stated that the voice for Mario was based on a voice he performed for the character Grimio from the Shakespeare comedy The Taming of the Shrew. Now, Grimio was an old, friendly Italian man, so he just thought, why not make it a young Italian man? <laughs> Charles' voice is perfect, there's, there's no other way to describe it. During his time working through Mario in real time, Charles had become familiar with Mario series creator Shigeru Miyamoto. He'd been seeking a professional voice actor for Super Mario 64, and so Miyamoto had Nintendo contact Charles to inquire about voicing Mario in the game. Now, Charles was not expecting this, but he agreed immediately. He made the trip from California to Bad Animal Studio in Seattle to record for the game. Mostly unscripted, Charles was given examples by the producers of what the teams in Japan were looking for. This, combined with his improvisation, led to the creation of many of Mario's catchphrases. During the recording session, they were trying to figure out what Mario would do when the player leaves him alone. Shuffleboarding. In the end, Charles came up with the idea that Mario would dream of pasta during his sleep. In the final game, Mario says... 1990. Ah, spaghetti. Ah, ravioli. Ah, mamma mia. And that's amazing. You know, when I sleep, I have a habit of sleep talking too, but more on that later. This Mario would be high-pitched and bright, giving Mario a youthful and energetic quality. Charles uses an exaggerated Italian accent, characterized by rolled R's, elongated vowels, and a rhythmic cadence that added a musical quality to Mario's voice. A common thing for Charles to do was to deliver phrases with a slight musicality, often emphasizing the first syllable of the phrase. Let's go! Waha! Okie dokie! Yahoo! He would also use loads of inflection and sometimes would slip into this funny little confused, whisper, giddy sounding tone for certain words or phrases. Okie dokie! Oh, the voice clips used in Super Mario 64 specifically would remain iconic for their pure energy and happiness. In fact, they'd go on to be reused for several games, including 
Mario Kart 64, Mario Party 1, Super Smash Bros. 64, Mario Party 2, Super Smash Bros. Melee, Super Mario Sunshine, all the Alpha Dream Mario and Luigi games, Mario Pinball Land, the entire Mario vs. Donkey Kong series minus the new remake, Super Mario 64 DS, Mario Kart DS, new Super Mario Bros., the beta version of Galaxy 1, 3D Land, Photos with Mario, the beta version of Mario Party 10, and probably more. Also, random fun fact, Charles Martinet's website has not been updated since around 1999, and only cites the N64 games as projects that he's worked on, including newly voicing Baby Mario. It's kind of funny. Charles actually appeared in Mario 64 as two other characters, as he had previously recorded sound effects for a sound effects library. Nintendo, unbeknownst, took one of these sound effects of Charles laughing and sped them up for the booze and slowed them down for Bowser. Martinet would be the main voice of Mario for over 30 years, without any switch-ups in the casting. But by Mario Odyssey, however, some people found that Charles' voice had changed a bit. For example, he can still hit the high-pitched wahoos in the recording booth, but during live shows where he has to talk for long periods, he lowers his voice, possibly to avoid straining it, to the point where sometimes it just sounds like Charles speaking. Oh yeah, mamma mia. Mm, mm, yeah. I like to play as Luigi. Luigi's kind of fun. Oh well, yeah, he's really good in Smash Bros. Oh yeah, yeah. mamma mia. Oh, what are the Mario games? You like a Mario Kart? In the games, voice clips are well rehearsed and only the best samples are kept, whereas at conventions, everything is on the fly and Charles is talking all day. Maintaining such a high-pitched voice is difficult after all and strains the vocal cords, especially as he aged. At 67 years old, after 32 years of voicing Mario, it's understandable that he would need to lower his pitch to protect his vocal cords and sustain his voice for longer periods. Whoa! Whoa! <laughs> It's a me! It's a me! Wah! Wah! Yippee! Yippee! Ha ha! Ha ha! Oof! Oof! Yahoo! Yahoo! Mamma mia! Mamma mia! All this to say Charles was certainly aging, as everybody does, but his Mario voice was majorly still intact. That's why it shocked the world when Nintendo dropped this little tidbit during a direct in September of 2021. Moto-san, what brings you in? I wanted to make an announcement, so I was hoping I could step in. The movie will be released in theaters in holiday 2022. I also wanted to reveal our key cast members who will be voicing Mario and his friends in the movie. What? <laughs> Yes, movie star Chris Pratt, known for the Lego Movie and Guardians of the Galaxy, would be playing Mario. The internet was stunned, shocked, and totally confused. Including me. Where was Charles? Why was he recast? Why did Illumination and Nintendo pick Chris Pratt as Mario? Well, there are a few reasons. First off, the obvious. He's a big name. For the past decade, Hollywood animated movies have been casting big name film stars instead of traditional voice actors. This trend was kickstarted by Shrek in 2001, but to be fair, those actors, such as Mike Myers and Eddie Murphy, were well casted and played their roles well. Since then, the tide has changed, and it's purely just based on star power. Look at films like Shark Tale or Trolls that made their actors a huge part of their marketing. This movie seemed no different, with a cast full of trending and beloved actors like Jack Black, Seth Rogen, and Charlie Day. But still, why Chris Pratt as Mario? According to co-director Aaron Harvith, for us, it made total sense. He's really good at playing a blue-collar hero with a ton of heart. For the way Mario is characterized in our film, he's perfect for it. Chris Pratt was hired and did some early voice tests, but he just couldn't find the right voice yet. He initially made the same mistake that so many previous Mario voice actors had made. The one that Charles Martinet had avoided, of giving Mario a voice that sounded too much like a New Jersey accent. More like a Tony Soprano than Super Mario. Eventually, Chris settled on a friendlier voice for Mario, which was pretty much just his regular speaking voice with some slight Italianisms. Once the first trailer dropped, people went kinda nuts. James Whitbrook described it as Chris Pratt with a slightly racist accent. And bro thought this was okay? Mamma mia! Then the film came out and we got an entire glimpse of Chris Pratt's performance and it was... Alright. 
Most people thought that Chris Pratt's Mario voice was just kind of decent. It wasn't terrible, it wasn't even offensive, it actually worked. That's a little mushroom man, a little mushroom man talking to me. What? It's supposed to be funny. Okay, so these bricks are just floating here? Uh, <laughs> so, uh, so everybody saw the commercial then? We're best friends. But are we? Ah, uh, mushrooms. Meow. Wahoo! Destiny is calling. What? No! But it just felt like Charles Martinet would have done a better job. He could have toned down his eagerness and acted with more emotion, and I think that's kind of important to point out. In the games, Mario is excited. It's an adventure with jumping and kicking. Of course his emotion is super exaggerated and happy. But Charles is an actor. He knows how to convey emotion, so he would have been able to do just that. People assume this movie with Chris Pratt was just a one-off change in the regular Mario voice cast. After all, Charles did appear in the film, playing a few minor cameo roles, including one as Mario and Luigi's father. But when Charles said the line, These are my boys! Hey! No one, except him and Nintendo, knew it would be the last line he would ever record for a Mario project. And those really were his boys, Luigi and especially Mario, because he was what brought them to life. Anyone and everyone knows what Mario sounds like, young or old, gamer or not. They all recognize the It's a Me. Excitement was buzzing on June 21st, 2023, when Nintendo revealed their newest Mario game, Super Mario Bros. Wonder. And if you listen really, really closely to Mario's voice from the trailer, it was Mario, yeah. But something seemed off. Just a little something. And people definitely took note of this. Then, on a cloudy day in August, Nintendo made a surprising announcement on their Twitter account in tandem with a Nintendo Direct. Charles Martinet would be stepping down from his role as the voice of Mario, three decades after his original audition. The company revealed that Charles would take on the new role of Mario Ambassador, traveling the world to meet and greet thousands of Mario fans. The news was a massive shock to everyone. For millions, Charles Martinet's voice was synonymous with Mario. People honored his legacy all over the internet, such as sharing art pieces, memories, tributes, fan works, all to show love to the man who voiced their childhoods. While at the Canada Fan Expo in 2021, Charles declared in an interview, I want to voice Mario until I drop dead. So why the sudden change? Charles, who was at the time 67, has been, as mentioned previously, doing it for a long time. However, all voices do indeed change over time. It's possible that maybe Charles and Nintendo decided to try and find a successor before his voice showed signs of aging. Let's take that quote from earlier and keep it going. I want to voice Mario until I drop dead. If someday I think I am no longer capable of doing it, I'll tell Nintendo to look into finding someone else. That might be the clue that he and Nintendo were preparing for the inevitable transition, but that left us with a big question. Who was Mario now? Who cares? On October 12, 2023, Nintendo issued a statement revealing the new Mario voice actor would be Kevin Afghani, a young, relatively new voice actor who'd previously voiced a character from Genshin Impact, as well as a few other smaller roles. This guy had some big shoes to fill, and did he pull it off? Ah! Yeah, I definitely have the unpopular opinion, but I do not like Kevin's voice for Mario. This is nothing against him. He seems like a wonderful person and is proud to be representing Nintendo, but he's just not Charles, and I'm sorry. I've tried to make peace with it, I've tried to accept it, but I just can't! Sometimes, he truthfully doesn't sound too bad. Okie dokie! <laughs> but sometimes, he sounds like a teenage boy going through puberty. Oh yeah, Mario time! Like, was there not a better take available? I've been hearing Mario's voice since I was a child. My earliest memories are playing the Sim Wii at home with my dad. I have an emotional attachment to this voice, so I'm not doing well with this change. Kevin can imitate Mario and the others, but his impressions often break when he has to talk or when he raises his voice, which he loves to do lots. It's clear that his vocal range is somewhat limited, which leads to his performance sounding inauthentic, sometimes like Mickey Mouse. <laughs> Charles could perform the voice effortlessly in any situation since it was his natural voice that he created, that he had pretty much perfected since day one. I want to like Kevin's voice, I really do. He seems like a genuinely awesome guy. Like apparently he wore a Mario costume for his prom. Like I want to like his performance, he seems like such a nice guy. And granted, not all of his voice clips are awful. Some are almost there. His jumps and grunts are pretty good. 
What I am not the hugest fan of is Nintendo trying to seemingly get Charles out of the picture. For example, in November of 2023, we got the release of WarioWare Move It, which has a micro game inspired by Super Mario 64 DS. Everything seems all fine and dandy until you realize those iconic Mario 64 sound bites, gone re-recorded. They sound extremely uncanny, especially because of how engraved those original clips are into all of our minds. The scream isn't bad, albeit off-putting, <laughs> but the here we go is, here we go, yeah. This is supposed to be a remaster of an old game, a representation of that old game. Why not just reuse the OG voice clips? This isn't even a Super Mario game. Charles Martinet himself has said he doesn't know what a Mario ambassador is, or what that means for him. Is it possible Nintendo just wanted to get Charles out of the picture and get a new voice actor that they can pay less? It's possible, but we can't say that for sure, of course. DON'T SUE ME! I really hope Kevin can grow into the role, especially with newer upcoming titles like Mario and Luigi Brothership. Practice does make perfect after all, and hopefully he'll be able to brush up on his voice. But I know for me personally, Mario will forever be Charles Martinet, and all the others are just voice actors. Talented ones, absolutely, but voice actors nonetheless. The voice of the plumber has come a long way since its early days. We've seen how Mario's voice evolved from the gruff tones of Peter Cullen and Lou Albano to the iconic high-pitched energy of Charles Martinet. Every actor has brought something unique to Mario, shaping him into the beloved character we know today. And just like Mario found his voice throughout the years, I'm finding mine. It's a process, and it's okay if it's a little rough around the edges at first. We all grow and evolve. Mario's voice reminds us that sometimes, change can be a good thing. Wait, is my voice gonna change in 30 years for no reason? Yes, yes it will. I've been your host, Little T, or I guess I'd be middle-aged T. And I'll see you guys next time. Ow. Okay, that should be the last of it. Mom, I just wanted to say thank you for letting me move back in with you and Dad. Just remember the rules, Tyson. I know, I know. No flammable substances, no flammable objects, nothing with a fire symbol. No microwave. Those are gonna be some cold pizza pops. Remember, Tyson, this is our temporary house while our other house is getting renovated from your little incident. My bad. Don't blow it up. Don't disfigure it, don't disface it, don't cut it, don't sniff it, don't pull it, don't squeeze it. Okay, okay, I understand. Not a dent. But just to clarify, is a lighter a flammable object? Because you can make the argument that technically- Tyson, put it down. Or the shot. Anyways, if you'll excuse me, I'm gonna take this to my room. Oh jeez. this.